So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this little farmhouse table. Uh, there are several ways of doing this. This is a pretty simple uh, way to get started building farmhouse furniture. It's square. There's not a lot of difficult cuts. There's a couple different ways of doing things, and I'll show you how to do some different things. This one's about 19 and a half inches tall. You can make this as tall or short as you want. I made this based off the furniture we have around the house, uh, so it fit well on the couch. I basically custom built it for me. I used two by fours and a two by six to make the top. You could use two by sixes, you could use two by eights and do separate pieces. Depending on the look you want with your wood, um, you decide how you make your top. But again, I'm gonna show you how I did this with two by fours and two by sixes. The same with your joining. So on your two by fours, if you're using rough two by fours, um, they're pretty bowy. If you're using the you know the high quality or premium two by fours, they're a lot straighter, but there's still some bows and crooks and crevices. So if you're going to joint these, remember that also. So if you're going to cut these three inches wide, you may want to cut them three and an eighth inch, and that way you can plane off an eighth of an inch to end up with your 24 when you go across here. So again, on your legs and everything, I've got nice straight edges here. You can leave the rolled over look, or you could take your sand, or you can do whatever you want to with them. I'm going to show you how to get the nice, clean, straight look. If you're going to go with just straight 2 by 4s that saves you a lot of time because you don't have to rip all these down. But what it also does is it expands the width of your project. So just take into consideration your math when you're setting up your project. Now, on my top pieces, they're 15 inches long. I've actually got this marked at 15 and an eighth inch. What this will do when I glue these together, if I get off a hair on either end, which, again, I'm not a carpenter, so I get off every now and then, I leave it a little bit long so I can go back and just nip the edge off of it and make them nice and smooth at the end. If you're good at what you're doing, you might not have to do that. If you're worse than me, you might have to do this five and a quarter inches. It's always easier to nip off a little bit than to try to add. So something else I've done, I've taken a small clamp, just a piece of scrap wood here. I've actually made a fence stop here. So basically, I clamped this to the back of my top fence, slid my fence over. So every time I slide these in, I can go faster since I'm cutting a bunch of 15 inch boards. I can just keep on sliding them in, slide them in, stop, and cut. And again, I'm not going to make you watch me cut boards. So, with this being done, all my cuts are made. So, here's where you need to decide whether you want to take off this extra edge, the little round over part, and make these nice and square. And if you want to square these up to like I'm going to do three inches, three inches, or if you want to leave the three and a half inch, again, just redo your math. Figure out how wide you want it and then subtract your sides to make it 24 inches wide or however you want it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and process my uh, two by fours. I'm not going to do the top or the bottom yet. We'll do that separately. I'm going to do these first. I'm going to rip these edges off first. Then I'm going to cut them down to three inches. I'm going to rip the edge off of one of these and then cut it down an inch and a half. And same with the crosses. I'm going to rip the edge off, cut it into two one and a half inch sections. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Um, if you've got two by fours, and they're not perfectly straight on the side, depending on how straight you want this project. When you run this with your fence, when you're putting pressure on here, if your fence is locked, your board will stay the same curve. So if there's a lower in here, when you push it through your fence, your board's going to wave, and you're going to have a wave on this side. If you want a perfectly straight board, if you take a steel beam level, like this one, not in the groove, put your 2 by 4 beside it. When you slide it, you slide it with the level, and that'll ensure you've got a nice straight edge on this side. That way when you flip it over, you get perfect boards. Again, this is farmhouse furniture. You don't need to be that precise, but if you wanted to be, that's how you would get a nice straighter edge on it. So what I wanna do with this board is I basically just wanna take this rounded over edge on it. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna open my fence. I'm gonna push my fence to where I just touched the blade, slide my board out, and I'm gonna tap it in a little bit further. You don't wanna to go too far because you want it three inches out of this board. It's three and a half inches wide now. Your blade's going to take about a quarter inch out, plus your round over. So if you do this on one side, should leave you enough off the other side to get you a three inch board. All right, so with ears on, eyes on, we're going to go ahead and cut the board. So as you can see, that gives me a nice crisp edge over here, and I've got more than enough room to get my three inches out of that. I'm not going to cut my three inches yet because I want to cut them all at the same time, so I know they're all exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and rip down the rest of these two by fours I've got, just taking this little edge off of each one of them. 
All right, so I still haven't touched my top or my bottom. I've got my legs, my side, my front and back, and my cross is all up and flat edged. So I'm gonna take these now, I'm gonna set this all to three inches. I'm gonna cut these down to three, these to three, two of these to three, and these last three boards are gonna get cut to uh, one and a half inches each. I'm gonna take it, slide the ruler, or the ruler, the tape measure to the fence. As you can see, I'm right to three inches on the outside edge of the uh, tooth there. Another good thing about doing this is these pieces you get off the end boards, if you look at uh, your box stores, Walmart, places like that, Home Depot, Lowe's, if you look, these are all pretty good sized boards. You can actually make those little baskets out of your scrap wood. Those baskets sell anywhere from like 14 to 20 bucks a piece. So the next thing I want to do is I want to bump this into an inch and a half. I'm going to double check the top of my board. Some of these are sometimes off a little bit. This one's right at an inch and a half. I'll go ahead and set my blade to inch and a half. Same way, outside edge of the tooth. One and a half. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Make it as perfect as you want, but that's pretty close to me. This is my front and back at the bottom, and these are my crosses. If for some reason you get your inch and a half off on one side and you're a little bit thicker, you could actually just flip it sideways and rip one more side off of it and make these perfectly square. Um, I've got mine pretty close, but if you do mess up your cut, again, once you cut these down this side, flip them over on one side or the other and feed them back through again and you'll shave them off to where they're even. All right, so the next step is to prep my top. Uh, I'm gonna do it the same way I did all the legs and stuff. I'm basically gonna rip the uh, fine edge off of here I'm going to cut these top two bigger pieces, my 2x6s, down to 4.5 inches. And then I'm going to cut my 2x4s down to 3 inches. Alright, so if I did my math correctly, my 2x6s are 24 inches long. I'm going to cut them down to 4.5, so that gives me 9 inches. 24 minus 9 is 15. So I cut my 2x4s to 15 inches. Now since I'm jointing these tabletops, instead of putting this on my joiner, I'm going to put my, uh, my uh, level up here. Again, this is an I-beam, metal I-beam, nice and flat. And I'm going to run this through with this on here. I'm going to push the level through at the same time I'm pushing the board through. It's kind of hard to see here, but as you can see, by doing that, I get a pretty good joint here. All right, so now that everything is cut, except for the bottom shelf, what you need to do is decide your finish, whether you're going to paint this, do you want a smooth finish, do you want to antique it, do you want to stain it. Um, we're still going to draw pocket holes in the legs and the sides and places like that. So I wouldn't sand it quite yet. When we get the pocket holes done, then sand everything. Then if you're going to paint it, you want a nice finished paint, um, I would go ahead and paint it before you assemble it also. Again, this is up to you. You can do it whatever way you want. It's just easier to sand and paint while it's all in pieces like this than once you get it all together. All right, I've mocked my two sides up here. So this is the side top. I've got this board laying flat, so it'll face outward. This board's turned up on the side, so that makes the bottom support for the bottom of the table. I've done that with both of the sides. And again, this is one of those situations where your side and your leg are almost the same length, so make sure you don't get them mixed up. So what I wanna do is I wanna measure up about two inches on the inside here. So I'm gonna do two inches here, two inches there, and I'm gonna go ahead and mark the front too because we've also got the front boards that are gonna to attach to here. Now you can make this two inches, you can make it four inches, you can make it one inch, you can flatten it to the floor. This is all your preference, uh, whatever you like. Uh, I'm gonna give it two inches off the floor. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna look at my board and do I want this exposed? Or do I gonna want this exposed? Now if you're gonna paint it, it probably doesn't matter unless you've got a bunch of dents or dimples in there. In my case, I'm painting. So I'm going to take my smoother side, I'm going to turn it the way I want it, and I'm going to check all my boards the same way. Anything that's going to be exposed, like this is going to be my face, check it. This is my leg facing outward. I've got like a crack there, so I'm going to turn it this way so you can't see the crack. So I'm examining all the boards, doing the same thing for it. Best sides go out. 
If it's me, probably every single board I had was turned the wrong way. Um, that one that way. That one. So all my good sides are out. So what I do now is take my pencil. I'm gonna just mark on here where my pocket holes go. That way I know which side of the board, so I'm trying to hold the camera and pencil at the same time, which side of the board my pockets go on. And repeat. That way I don't screw up when I get over to the uh, pocket hole maker and screw the wrong sides. So my pocket holes are drilled. I've marked two inches up on the side, two inches up on the inside. I've got my 90 here. I'm gonna use it to straighten up my edge up here. I'll pull these out, I'm gonna glue both ends, drop them in, clamp them. Once I get them clamped, I'm gonna stand it up, take a look at it, make sure everything's flush, tighten the clamps up, and then we'll put the screws in. I remember when you're putting this in, this one goes flat to your table. Now, my table is not the best table in the world, as you can tell. It's a work table. It's also plastic, so it doesn't, uh, it's got a bow in it. It's not perfectly straight. So that's why when I stand this up, I'm gonna make sure it's perfectly even before I clamp it down and screw it. If you're using a nice hard workbench or something here, probably not to do what I'm doing. It'll probably be nice and even. So I got my glue there. And again, I'm just gonna get this visually close for now. Check my top the best I can. Check this side. I'm going to clamp it. I'm not going to over tighten this. And make sure you put the clamp where you can actually get your screw holes to. And I'm just going to bump it up to where it touches. Double check. That's good. And glue my pump. If you cut these nice and square, that should pretty much go right in the place where it wants to be. Again, not going to over tighten these. They're just snug right now. I'm going to stand it up without losing my clamp. If the board's twisted or turned, you can actually be square on the bottom and not on the top. And vice versa. Now, again, you can make this as perfect or as unperfect as you want. That's pretty darn close. I think I got a little warp on my board, so I'm not quite perfect here. But what I'll probably do is I'm going to clamp it, put this screw in up here, and then I'll push up a little bit here and tighten the bottom screw down. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten my clamps up. Don't want anything to move. I'm going to use two and a half inch pocket screws on this. All right, so I went ahead and hit this with a 120 just to smooth down some of the uh, swirls from the saw. A couple little blemishes here and there that I didn't really like. I'm going to go ahead and distress this anyhow, so I'm not too worried about the perfect finish. But for me personally, I just wanted to smooth it out a little bit. Again, finish this however you want. You don't even have to do what I'm doing here. Again, this could just be a rough 2x4. You could already have it painted and done by now. I'm just going through a few extra steps um, for the finish that I'm going for. This next thing I want to do is I want to take my fronts, put them in here. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the sides. I'm going to clamp them, 
straighten them out, glue them in place, and then screw them down. So I've got my tops glued in, my fronts, my bottom. Now this is the inch and a half thick beam here. Because in the bottom, as you can see, I've lined them up perfectly here. If you stand this upright, it's easier to do than me leaning over the edge. But I took my square and I laid it across my edge just to make sure I was nice and square across the edges. Squared up my corners before I screwed them down so my corners are nice and square. Nice and tight, should be good. So I'm going to clamp this, screw this piece in, do the same on the bottom. We'll go to the next step. So I'm on the side of my unit, I want to do my crosses next. So basically what I want is I want this piece to fit up in the screw at an angle and down at the bottom at an angle. Now, I'm sure there's some funky math for me. You could take this by this by this and divide it by this and multiply it by pi and get the correct angle at the top. Um, I don't know that math formula and don't care that I don't know that I want to know it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the corner, if I can get the camera off here. I'm going to take this corner and clamp it so that corner is just overlapping that almost a perfect angle. Then I'm going to take this bottom half and I'm going to clamp it so this corner is touching that corner at almost a perfect angle. Once I get that done, I'm going to take a pencil marker from the inside and then I'll have my angle to cut. So I've got this one so it's right on the corner and I've got this one so it's right on the corner. Now from the inside with those clamped into place, what I want to do is I want to take my pencil and mark that angle. It's a little easier to do if you don't have a camera in your hand. camera all off of whack but basically I mocked that angle also. I don't want to do my other side yet. Basically I want to do this first, take it off. Alright so now that you got your pencil marks on here what you can do you can either go over your skill saw and start chopping hope you get it right. Your chop saw, skill saw, same, same thing. Or you can take this little Craig tool I got here. It's a little uh, corner measure. I'm gonna cross it inside I'm going to lay the flat edge on this. I'm going to slide it down to where my line is. All I have to do is take this until I find the perfect line. Once I get the line, which is there, tighten my little thumb screw down. And on the wheel here, it shows my inside and outside. So it's 140 and 38. So 38 degrees. So I'm going to cut. So I'm going to set my saw to 38 degrees. Chop this, chop that, should fit perfectly in place. So once I got my 38 degree angle in here, I realized when I put it over here, there's nothing to hold this to. When I go to chop it, it's just gonna move in my hand. It's gonna make a mess, break something, something's gonna fly out, hit me. So I put my adapters on here. So basically when I put this in here, I can lock it in this way. And instead of starting at a 90 degree angle, I started at 45. Since my angle is 38 degrees, I take 48 minus, or 45 minus 38, end up with seven degrees. Set my blade to seven degrees. When I drop this down, you'll see it's right on the line. So basically, seven degree cut plus 45. Seven degree plus 38 equals a 45. And I'm starting with a 45, so that's what I want to be at. So I'm going to nip this off. We're going to set it in place, and then we're just going to start snipping this end up into place until we get it to where we want it. Again, just turn it around, nip, and then just start slicing it until it fits in there perfectly. All right, so after snipping it up a few times, I've got my fit that I want. I'm gonna take this one back out. I'm going to lay it on top of my other one. Make sure it's straight. Pencil mark my lines. Take them over. Cut them. Bring them back over. So what I was saying before, if you uh, didn't catch that or if you've never done this before, basically by leaving this a little bit longer, I'm just going to keep on snaking off a little bit of this at a time until I get a good fit. So I'm basically going to take off less than the width of the saw blade 
It may take me three or four times before I get this to fit in here where I want it. So I think I got that where I want it at. Basically, I'd rather make more trips back and forth to the saw to get a nice good fit than to make less trips back and forth to the saw and have a sloppy fit. So now you can do two things here. You can either lap this, which means you can cut half of this board out, half of this board out, stick them together, or you can just cut it and put it in place. Similar technique to marking this either way. I'm going to pull this so it's halfway past this, halfway past the bottom, give or take a little bit. I'm going to put this one on the inside, same thing, halfway and halfway. And again, if you did that right, it should be a snug fit, if not a perfect fit. So I'm going to bump those together. I want to bump these together, if I don't bump it out. That gives me my crossing point. So what I want to do is mark these. Because I'm going to cut this and I'm going to attach it to this. I'm going to cut this one and attach it to this. I'm not going to lap mine. I'm going to mark it on both sides. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to make this upper right, lower left. When I cut this, if this angle changes any at all, or if this angle is off just a hair down here, it could affect where my marking is. So I'm gonna make sure I keep this in the same position it's in right now. So I'm gonna go cut this. Again, I'm gonna cut it longer than it needs to be, and then just snake this up to where it needs to be. So I'm putting my marker on there, lining my line up, tighten it down. That shows me I've got like a 78 degree angle. Now back over to my saw, this time I've taken off my 45 degree jig, I'm back to a 90 degree, so I've got 78 degrees on my angle, I'm starting with a 90, so 90 minus 78 is 12, so I've got my saw set to 12 degrees, and again you'll see when I pull this down, straight across the line, so I'm going to snug this up, stick them back in. Upper right side, just so you know, there's no pauses here. I'm gonna push this into place now where it's supposed to be. Upper right, and if you did that right, you should have a nice form fit right there. If it's off a little bit, like it is, you may need to take a little bit more off of this. So I'm gonna just snip a little bit more off this, I'll go ahead and cut my bottom and put it in place, and I should be ready to go on the next side. I moved the camera down. Hopefully you can see this on here. You can see my top one fits in there pretty good. It's good enough for what I'm doing here. By the time I line that one up, push it in place, it lines up good. My bottom, I got a gap here and a gap here. So that doesn't mean I need to take off this edge. If I flush this piece back out where it's supposed to be, you'll notice it's still straight. I just need to take off a little bit more here. So make sure you're not changing your angle. Don't doubt your angle. Just cut it down a little bit more. And again, that's not much. That's like probably half a blade, if even half a blade. So I'm gonna turn around and repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, so there's several ways of attaching this. It's just for decoration, so the glue will hold it in place uh, once the glue sets. So you don't really need a lot of pressure to hold it in place. I'm going to take mine, and you can brad nail through here, so you can shoot a brad in here, a brad in here. Uh, the middle one, you can shoot the brad through here to hold this one in place. And the top one, you can put a screw in from the back and hold it in place and glue it. Uh, what I'm going to do with these, on the inside of the top here, I already did this side so you can see what I was doing. I'm going to take a screw, I'm going to pre-drill a hole down at an angle, not a steep angle. Once I start to screw it, then I'm going to take it to the, the drill, turn it upward, and run it down into this one. Just make sure your screw is not so long that it pops out of the bottom. So make sure you get the right length screw. So that's how I'm going to secure the top. The bottom is deep enough that I'm just going to take the screw, put a pocket hole in there, recess it in there, shoot it up through the bottom. That'll keep that one in place. So we're going to attach this bar first. Clamp it to where your clamp is not going to be in the way of your screw, but your board doesn't move out of the way. 
So I'm going to be right on the edge of the board. And I'm just trying to keep the board from pushing forward and backwards when I screw this down. Once I get that in place, it's going to be difficult with the camera in the way. I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to take a drill. And again, I'm not drilling down yet. I'm starting to drill straight in. I'll change the angle of the drill. Since I don't have a super long bit, I'm just going to start the hole. I don't want to split my wood. I'm going to grab a two inch screw. I'm going to run it down in at an angle. Now this part's going to be up under the tabletop. You won't see it so it doesn't have to be pretty. I'll take the screw and I'm going to force it towards the fat part of the wood and downward. So sometimes you got to back it up a couple times to get to the angle you want. I'll take my hand and put it under here and put a little pressure up. Now again, you can clamp it if you're not sure your screw is too long. Make sure it didn't come through the other side. I'm good to go. Top is done. I'm going to take the bottom of it. Take my clamp off here. Put the table upright. Same thing, I'm going to put the clamp on here to keep it from moving. And again, I'm just covering the crack there so it doesn't push in or out. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Make sure when you run your screw through for your pot for your uh, recess, don't hit your screw underneath. So I'm gonna go up a little bit higher than what it is, but I'm gonna drill down in it and slide out. But you don't necessarily have to countersink it, but I'm doing it. Same thing. I'll take a two-inch screw, and shoot it up in there. And that ball, that beam's in place. Now maybe it just happens to me. I can't imagine it's just me. I'm sure everybody that does woodworking runs into this. Some people just edit it out. Some people leave it in. As you can see, screwing all this together, my cross has got off a little bit here. So I got two options. I can just kind of fudge it to where it's kind of in between both of them. I can slide this over to right about there. I can get a pretty good cover there. It'll look fine. Put the screw in down here and be good and have a little gap on this side. No one besides you will probably ever notice that if you're selling this to somebody. Again, distressed furniture doesn't have to be perfect. But if I put it up in place where it belongs, as you can see, my cross is way off. What happened, as you can tell when I put it back in place, something has moved up here, down here. Might even got it on the wrong side versus the other one. That side fit really good. So I can either cut this board a little bit longer, make it fit properly, or just slide it over, kind of shim it in. Me, I'm just gonna glue it, slide it over, shim it in place like that, paint it, no one will ever notice. All right, so with that in place, that's our base complete. Now again, finish this as good as you want. You can sand it back down. You can use wood filler for all the little grooves, cracks, crevices. You can take a hammer, beat the crap out of it, uh, distress the whole bottom of it. Uh, up to you but that at least gets your foundation done all right time to work on the top we got some decisions to make here first of all i left these a little bit longer uh, as you remember at the very beginning so when i flush this side out if i've got a crack or a groove over here when i clamp all this together glue it pocket screw it i'm going to take my saw and just run a nice straight edge across there so when i butt this side out it fits in perfectly then you got to decide what kind of finish you're going to do. Are you going to do a distressed finish? Are you going to take hammer nails, beat the crap out of it, get a nice wood distressed look and stain it? If so, you can probably just clamp together like it is, sand it a little bit, beat the crap out of it, and stain it. Uh, me, I'm going to run mine through a planer so i got a nice flat, smooth finish on the top. I'm not going to stress it. I'm just going to stain it. And I'm just going to paint the stress the bottom of when I want to do the paint. Either way, before you do that, make sure you pick your boards. Flip your boards all over, look at the tops, look at the bottoms, 
see which one looks the best. Put your bad side, whichever way you want. I prefer to put my bad side up, my good side down, just so when I go to screw this together, I'm gonna mark my lines across here, and I don't wanna put the screws on the wrong side of my wood. So if you're ready for that step, again, just mark these, glue all your boards together, clamp it, screw them together, and move on to the next step. Me, I gotta go plane some wood. So there's everything ran through the planer. Again, I'm not going for perfection here. I just didn't want all the waves and stuff because I'm not going to distress the top. All right, so I'm ready to put my top together. Again, you can do this a couple different ways and you can do it several different ways. You can either just glue these boards together, put them in a clamp, let them set overnight. It should be perfectly fine. If you want to do it faster, you can set screw them or you can countersink the screws, put them all together. You can glue and countersink the screws all together. And again, depending on the finish you're going for, um, you could run these for a planer even more. I'm going to basically glue and set screw or countersink the screws. Again, I'm not too worried about this edge right now because I cut these a little bit longer. So even though I don't have a perfect seam with my breadboard or my sideboard here, um, I'm not worried about it. What I want is a nice clean finish across here. So I'm going to clamp and uh, screw these together one section at a time. Make sure when you clamp these together, you'll see use an inboard clamp or I'm just going to use a regular clamp to keep these together. And that'll also keep you from creating a warp or a bow. If you pull these together with just a wood clamp, if you only clamp them on the top, you tend to bow the you, you concave it. If you only clamp it on the bottom, you will convex it. So basically, if you're going to clamp this all the way across, make sure you put clamps on the bottom and on the top. So you create an even flat board and you don't create a, a curved up board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pencil and straight edge where I want my pocket holes. So two, two in, and then probably uh, seven and a half, which is my middle. And then I'm going to split the difference between these two again. And these don't have to be super precise. I mean, you can do them again as accurate as you want. I'm going to depend more on the glue holding this together than the screws, but five screws in each one of these boards holding it together, it's not going to go anywhere. The other thing to remember when you pick your screw size, if you plane these like I did, if you normally you would use a two and a half inch screw on a two by four, but since I planed them, if you use a two and a half inch screw, you're liable to pop right through the top of your table. So make sure you again check the screw before you actually run the screws in. All right, so all my pocket holes are drilled now. If you do like I did and you cut these down to three inches, when you do your pocket holes, you may come out the edge of your board. Now, I don't want this to be on the end of my table, so I want to make sure I use a plain board for the end of my table with a nice smooth surface, like so. Same on the other end. That's why I had to do a double pocket. So basically, one will drone this way, one will drone this way. That way, when I end up on my other side, I end up with a nice smooth board on that side. I'm going to take a couple 2 by 4s here and I'm basically going to create a little platform to set these on. It's going to be hard to do it on the camera, but this will give me room for my glue to drip underneath of it. And it will also give me room to clamp on the outside. Plus again, my table is not the most stable table. It's not the straightest. So if I do a couple 2 by 4s I'm going to get a better surface. And I'm going to end up with a nice smoother plane than I would if I did it on the curve of my plastic table. So I got those where I want them at. I'm going to start pulling and clamping and screwing them together. Fold it back down, put it in place. Once I get it in place, I'm going to take my 90 again, double check, take my clamps. I just got a couple small clamps. Again, I'm not using these to Put any pressure on it. This is just to keep the board from tilting left and right on me. Make sure my seam stays straight. So those don't even have to be super tight. I've still got a gap there. I'm going to take me a full clamp, which I don't have ready. We're going to clamp across the board, making sure that I don't clamp my uh, over top of my screw holes. Now 
and we'll take a full clamp, put it on, making sure I don't clamp over my screw holes, snug it. On the other side, snug it again. Watching my screw holes, I'm not covering them so I can hit them with my Merman screws in. Tighten these up so they're nice and even. Then I'm going to finish clamping this down. Run my screws in and then work my way to the outside edges. Start there and then work your way out. Repeat that down throughout the board. Alright, so after I got everything clamped, I just flipped it over. Alright, so after I got everything uh, screwed together, I just flipped it over. Checked it, made sure it was straight, which it is. Wiped off the excess glue. Don't care too much about the bottom. Got all the glue off the top uh, that I could. Now again, back to your finish. This still has some seams. You can see the grooves. You can leave this just like it is. Stain it, uh, paint it, whatever, and be done with it. I'm going to take some sanding. I'm going to sand this down to get it a lot smoother and get rid of some of my seams. Plus, I'm going to stain it, so I need to make sure I get all the glue off here. So make sure you clean your glue off good. Stain does not stick to glue. All right, so the next step, I've got to get me a nice straight edge down this side here. And I need a nice straight edge down that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square. Put the square on here. Take a piece of track, saw track. Butt it up against here so I've got a nice 90 degree line. As I slide this toward the end, my shortest board is at the very end here. I can see a nice straight line going across here. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. So what I want to do is take this board here. I'm going to measure an inch and a half back in and clamp my um, fence guide. When I do that, when I run my skill saw down through here, it'll just take off the very end of the board. Uh, your skill saw might be a little different. I'm using a DeWalt uh, 20 volt cordless. I've got an inch and a half offset for my blade to the fence on it. You'll see in just a second once I get this clamped on. All right, so again, I'm gonna take this, put it to an inch and a half. I'm gonna get this just eyeballed in place. So my tape measures at an inch and a half right now once I get it there. So I'm at an inch and a half. You can do a little bit if you want to. Again, you're just going to lose a little table width. This goes back to the beginning when I said to leave room in case you need to do this. I'm going to clamp that loosely in place. So I'm at an inch and a half still. So I'm going to clamp it from this side. So I've measured in an inch and a half. This is my shortest board. I've clamped this on this side. I'm going to take my square, make sure it's butted up nice and straight. I'm going to push this to where my guide runs straight across my board. And once I get that there, I'm going to clamp this end on the inside. Like so. Double check, triple check. Slide that back. Pop this clamp without moving the board, clamp it to the inside. So with that side being done, now what we do is spin around to the other side. The other side's not nearly as bad. But I still want to... Alright, what's well, two smooth sides, now I'm going to take it over, I'm going to sand it. Uh, I'm going to hit it with a 120, I'm not going to sand it all the way because we still got to put our ends on, or our breadboards on. So I'm going to go ahead and sand it to where it's close and then we'll attach the breadboards and do the same thing. We'll rip off the extra little piece that's on the end here since we're over like an eighth of an inch. Uh, but I want to attach the breadboards first. That way if the breadboards are over, I can cut through the breadboards and everything and have a nice straight edge on both sides. So I'm going to use this end as my top. So I'm going to put a little T on here and then I'm going to just mark my pocket holes. I know where I want them at, so that's... I might as well do the other boards too. I've done every other board, so I might as well do each one. Now, I don't need two in each one of these boards since I've got them all clamped and glued together. It's like one big slab. And if you did a 2x6 here or a 2x8, you would put like two in each board. Uh, that way you've got good stability. Go drill my holes. Uh, same thing I did on this. I'm going to clamp it, glue it, and screw it together. No sense in you watching me do that.
All right, so with my top finish now, uh, finish this to whatever level you want. If you want to fill any uh, holes, fill them. If you're going to stain it, make sure you get all your glue off. I sanded this with a 220. I'm not going to go any, uh, I don't think it needs any more than that for what I'm doing with it. It's softwood, so some pieces come out more than others. So when you're uh, sanding, make sure when you're pushing down, you push down evenly across here. If not, you'll end up with divots and grooves all over the place, even using an orbital sander. All right, so one of our last things to make is our bottom shelf before we... So one of the last things we need to do is cut our bottom shelf in. I waited till the end to make sure if everything, you know, once you start screwing and twisting and turning, sometimes things move a little bit. So I get my final measurements now. So I'm 14 on the money by 17. So we're going to paint this and while this is drying, we're going to do a 14 by 17 shelf for the bottom. All right, so I've cut my boards to 14 inches lengthwise. Um, width wise, I want to end up with three boards in here. It's 17 inches deep. So what I want to do is I want to take 17 divided by three. That gives me 5.666. 5.666 is a little bit less than 11 sixteenths if you do the fractions out. So hitting 11 sixteenths on here is going to be a little bit complicated unless you've got you know a precise uh, table saw or something like that. I'm using a job site table saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this easier. I'm going to take this just a little bit less than five and three quarters, rip them widthwise down, measure it, and then cut off a 17. Uh, that's just faster and simpler than trying to figure out 5.666 fraction and measuring it out for me. All right, so with them cut down to five and three quarter inches, that gives me an overall of about 17 and a half. I shaved off just a little bit, but... Um, so if I end up with that, now I can basically take this, I'm going to go ahead and joint this together, make sure I'm flush on my end so i got a nice square on the inside, and then I can rip off to 17 inches exactly. Now if you're unsure about your cuts, again it's a whole lot easier to uh, take board off than to add board. So if you're not sure about your 14 width, leave it 14 and a quarter, and just keep running through your table saw, so taking little pieces off at a time until it fits in there nice and snug. All right, so after I got my shelf cut pretty much where I wanted it, again, it was a little bit over what I needed. I trimmed off the edges. I got 17 by 14, so I right through the hole now, nice and snug on both sides. So we're gonna measure the thickness of this. We're gonna put a cleat on here so the shelf sits on top of the cleat. If you wanna do pocket screws, you can easily flip this over, put pocket screw holes in here and just pocket screw it to the frame. I like to sit it on cleats myself. I'm going to take my scrap wood here that I've got left over from the shelves and I'm going to cut me a couple cleats. So this is the one I cut off the bottom. Uh, this doesn't have to be super thick. I'm not putting a lot of weight on it. So I'm just going to split this in half, split this in half. And again, it's the same thickness as the three quarter inches. The two by four at the bottom is inch and a half. So when I do this, put the shelf on it, I'll have the proper height for my shelving. All right, so with these cut, again, these are just going to fit on the bottom. Like so, the shelf will right on top of it. I'm going to take these now and I'm going to cut them just a little bit smaller than what I actually need. I don't need them to go from edge to edge. You can do edge to edge for me you want, but I'm just going to make it so it's maybe a half inch shorter than what the board actually is. Now that I'm ready to stain the top and the bottom, I just realized that I didn't drill pocket holes in my um, front and back and sides for my tabletop to screw to. Now, there's a couple different ways of doing this. You could put an L bracket in here, which some people do. Um, you can make they make little clips that you can sink into the wood, hold the top up. I'm just going to pocket screw it, so I'm going to take my Craig over there, just flip it upside down. I'll flip the whole thing upside down and just draw four pocket holes or two pocket holes on each uh, corner. And just in case you did the same thing I did, if you're following my instructions, you probably did. If you remembered, I'm going to put this further in the video. I'm going to kind of clip it in, edit it in somehow. Or make a note on there but basically i just flip my unit over balance it with a piece of two by four and put the crate on it luckily i didn't have my paint done yet so um, this is the first coat of black so i'm going to draw my pocket holes and i'll just respray it again if i need to all right so for my finish i'm going to use a pre-stain i'm going to use a early american 230 and i'm going to use a polyurethane for the top of it uh, you can use a um, Poly acrylic if you want to or acrylic or whatever top you want 
Um, I'm doing this inside my garage, so the polyurethane thing seems to be the most compatible for my situation. If you got a better ventilated space, um, you do uh, the polyacrylic or something else. All right, so while my stains are drying, I'm going to put my cleats on. Um, you can do this before or after you paint. Uh, we're not painting inside of here anyhow because this is going to get the shelving in it. But what I want to do is I want to pre-drill these. So again, I've cut these a little bit shorter than what I need. That way they fit in the pocket. Make sure you get the correct side. So take a piece of your uh, shelving unit or your shelf. All right, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach these cleats. Now, if this was inch and a half uh, stock, I didn't cut it down. I would just go ahead and measure up three quarters of an inch, mount it. But just to make sure, it's easier just to take a small piece of your bottom shelf, take your cleat that's already pre-drilled, and lay this on top and get a nice flush edge on it. So I've already done these two over here. So I'm going to put it on there, I'll take my clamp and slide it underneath. Make sure you don't cover your screw hole. And I'm just going to snug this up to where it doesn't move on me. Make sure your piece is down so you can put your shelf on it in the front. So this is not tight. I can still move it up and down if I need to. Take my piece of shelving, slide it in, and just flush it out. Check, double check once you get it where you want it. You have to push it back up, reach underneath there, push your cleat back up. Once you get it there, tighten your clamps up, pull it out, and then screw your shelf in, or screw your cleat in. I'm just using inch and a quarter screws on these. If you use a thicker piece of wood, like a thicker cleat, you might use just an inch and a half. Again, just determine whatever size you want. I prefer to do my center first. If you see something physically move, put your shelf back up in there and readjust if you have to. If you do the outside edge first and it moves, then you can't really adjust anything. So do your center first and then it'll still pivot back and forth. And then just do that on all four sides. So I'm ready to paint my base and poly my tops. So I'm going to poly the tops first because it takes about two hours between uh, coats on the poly. I probably just put two coats on there. So I'll put the one coat on there. I'll paint my base. I'll clean up my mess that's around here. Uh, make sure you don't want to do any sanding. If you're doing this inside your garage, make sure the air is all cleared out overnight or something between sanding and putting your poly on. If not, you have a bunch of stuff stuck into your poly. Once the paint's done, the floor's clean, everything's picked up in here a little bit, I'll come back with my second coat of poly on, and then I'll be probably done for the day until the poly dries, and then tomorrow we'll attach the base. All right, so I recheck my bottom piece. Once you paint this, if you get a little paint down in your grooves, you may create a little bit of problem here. So I basically re just sanded a couple edges on here just to make it fit in there nice and perfect. So I've got it ready to drop in. My top is completely dry now, so I'm ready to attach it. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and distress my piece. I'm just going to take some sandpaper uh, or my orbital sander. I'm just going to hit it places to bring the black through it. Again, this is optional. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. Uh, entirely up to you. All right, so that's what I ended up with. Again, this took like five minutes. Distress it as little or as much as you want to. I just got it evenly looked. Like I said, I don't want it to look like it's beat to death, but I don't want it to look like it's brand new either. Now, once I get that done, like I said, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to drill some holes in my cleat. I'm not going to drill a lot. I'm going to do probably two, 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 and two. So eight screws in the bottom just to screw up through to hold the bottom piece in. I've got a really snug fit on my bottom piece. Again, this is one step you don't have to do. Or you could take your bottom and you could... Uh, pocket hole like you do there and just screw it into the sides. Again, I prefer the cleats. Now I did counter, I did countersink these bottom screw holes. Um, not that anyone's gonna be looking up under your table, but if for some reason you catch up from a far angle, you got a really wide room, you don't wanna see a little screw head sticking down. So I did countersink these a little bit. I brought my bottom in, screw it down, and then we'll be ready to attach our top. 
So I've got it flipped over. I drilled my holes in for my um, bottom shelf. Now, to make it easier on yourself, if you put your top on next, it'll be a whole lot easier to get to these screws. If not, you're going to have to reach through these holes and try to angle your drill and stuff to get in there. So I'm going to attach my top first, drop my bottom shelf in, then attach my bottom shelf. So I'm going to take my stand. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Make sure your opening goes whichever direction you want. So this is my side beams. I want my breadboards running down the edge with my side beams. If you want to do it the other way, you want the breadboard in front, flip it around that way. This is how I want it mine set. So I'm going to put it on here and I'm just going to do some measurements and get this lined up as square as I possibly can. So after I got it evened out here, I took a couple clamps just to hold it in place while I screw it down. That way it doesn't move on me. Yeah. All right, so you see my top is on now. I'm gonna take my bottom, slide it in. And again, now my bottom fits in there nice and snug. So if your bottom fits nice and tight like that, you don't have to screw that from the bottom. If you wanna attach it from the bottom, Simply flip it over, shoot your screws up to the bottom, and attach it. So another option for the bottom is to plank it and not um, screw this one like this one's screwed together. Nice solid piece of wood, but if you want to plank it and you end up with more of a plank look, you can go with this. Um, I think I like this look better. This is the way I did my first one that I did. So I've got a matching set now if I do it this way. All I need to do is put my poly on there let it dry. Same thing here, you can attach these from the bottom if you want, you don't have to. They're not going to fall over unless your table flips over. So depending on if you're moving your table or flipping your table over, those sit in there perfectly, don't need to do anything. So there's the end result. Uh, quite happy with the way it turned out. Um, this is probably a two-day project uh, between the paint and the stain drying. Uh, the assembly took maybe four to six hours to cut everything and assemble it. And depending again on your finish, you could probably put this together in a couple hours if you didn't, you know, cut the boards down, cut the smooth edges off. If you just left this two by four and you went out and bought some two by twos, uh, you could probably put this together in half the time it took me to put it together. Again, I just wanted more of this clean, sharp edge look. Uh, something else you can do on the edges when you're sanding this or distressing it, you can actually take this and roll this if you wanted a little bit with a sander just to get the sharp edge off. Um, sharp corner same up on top here you could roll this you could round it over however you want to finish your top we don't have any small kids anymore in the house so I'm not worried about someone banging a head or anything like that but if you have problems like that or if you have to uh, do something you can round the edges again you can round them over however you want to finish your top up to you so I want to thank everyone for watching um, this is the first time I've ever really videotaped building anything that I assembled like this so uh, hopefully I get better as I go uh, I apologize for any of the repeated words over and over and over. I'm going to try to edit down the best I possibly can. Please click on like, subscribe, drop me a comment.